Hi, this is Derek C. Moss, Professor of English and Interdisciplinary Studies at SUNY Potsdam. Welcome to A Deeper Dive into African American Literature, a daily series of short podcasts produced in conjunction with SUNY Potsdam's Celebration of Black History Month in 2021. Each day this February, we'll be looking at and listening to the work of an African American writer whose name may not be as familiar as Frederick Douglass, Zora Neale Hurston, Langston Hughes, or Toni Morrison. But these writers' contributions help give us a much fuller picture of Black artists' roles in shaping American culture. Episode 26, Brian Washington. Until recently, the list of prominent African-American authors whose work focuses on gay characters has been fairly short, with few writers beyond James Baldwin and E. Lynn Harris emerging into the mainstream. Brian Washington's first two books strongly suggest that his name will be added to that list, though, if it hasn't already been. Born in Kentucky, Washington moved to the greater Houston area as a young child and remained there through his undergraduate years at the University of Houston, where he studied with noted novelist Matt Johnson. He earned his MFA from the University of New Orleans in 2017, and two years later published a collection of short stories entitled Lot that included a substantial portion of his graduate thesis. After receiving several prizes for both first-time authors and LGBTQ authors, Washington followed up a year later with his debut novel, Memorial, which, like the stories in Lot, primarily takes place in Washington's hometown and depicts both the joys and difficulties of growing up black and gay in modern-day Texas. As of 2020, Washington is the writer-in-residence at Rice University in Houston. Memorial is told primarily from the perspective of the book's main character, a young black man named Benson. In the following excerpts from the novel, we learn more about Benson's stormy relationship with his lover, Mike, and how his upbringing in and around Houston shaped his sensibilities as a young adult. Our relationship is what, four years old? Eh, but that depends on how you count. We haven't been to a party in months, and when we did go to parties, at first no one knew we were fucking. Mike just stood to the side while whatever white girl talked her way into my space, then he'd reach up over my shoulder to slip a finger into my beer. We knew how we looked, and how we didn't look. My parents pretend I'm not gay. It's easier for them than it sounds. My father lives in Katy, just west of Houston, and my mother stayed in Bel Air, even after she remarried. Before that, we took most of our family dinners downtown. My father was a meteorologist. It was a status thing. He'd pick up my sister and my mother and me from the house, ferrying us along I-45 just to eat with his co-workers, and he always ordered our table the largest dish on the menu. Basted pigs spilling from platters, pounds of steamed crabs sizzling over bok choy. And he called this work, because he was always working. My mother never debated him or cussed him out or anything like that. She'd repeat exactly what he said, inflect his voice. That was her thing. She'd make him sound important, like some kind of boss. But my father's a little man, and her tactics did exactly what you'd think they might do. Eventually, she left. Lydia went with our mother, switching high schools. I stayed in the suburbs at my old junior high, and my father kept drinking. He lived off his savings once he got fired from the station for being wasted on air. Sometimes he'd sub high school science classes, but mostly he stayed on the sofa, booing at the hourly prognoses from KHOU. A few months in, Mike said we could become whatever we wanted to be whatever that looked like. I'm so easy, he said. I'm not, I told him. You will be, he said. Just give me a little time. For more information about Washington and his work, click on the link above to visit his personal website. Check back tomorrow at the link at the bottom of the screen for another episode of A Deeper Dive into African American Literature. While you're there, you'll be able to find links to all of the previous episodes in the series, as well as links to booksellers from whom you can purchase these authors' works. And please, if you've enjoyed this series so far, help us spread the word. Thanks and gratitude go out to Clifton Harkham, Jason Hunter, and Alex Jacobs Wilkie at SUNY Potsdam, as well as to David Summerstein and Bonnie North at North Country Public Radio.